Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed screen capture of my workflow, mostly inside of Cinema 4D, but other digital art applications as well. My name is Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, animator, designer, and your pal. And I'm fired up, excited as hell, as always, to have you guys back this week. Um, I guess I should start off by saying happy Halloween. Uh, we, we wound up having five Tuesdays this month, I believe. So this is our fifth and final piece in the spooky Halloween series. Um, a lot of fun putting this one together. I know in, in previous uh, weeks we talked about how, uh, how much fun we were having using the sculpting tools, um, using some body paint, and decided to take the opportunity this week to practice some more with that stuff and, and dig in a little deeper and get to know the, the features and the tools a, a little bit better. So the concept for this week is a really, really simple sort of cute character wearing a ridiculous, horrible, scary mask. Something perfect to go trick-or-treating in, I'd think. So as you can see, what we're working on here is just fleshing out this really simple character shape. So we're just using a capsule. We're using some uh, some capsules with a spline wrap to make the limbs. Um, I tried making the legs with a, uh, a loft nerve and wasn't loving the result earlier. So you saw me delete that and just start again with some capsules. Here I've got the symmetry and some IK spline set up. And that was, that was really the, the, the quick and dirty basics of it. So now what we're going to do is, is get in here and really start working on that mask. So to, to play well with the very geometric, simple character, we've got this, this uh, cylinder that's going to serve as the foundation for the mask. So we're going to start with really a, a rather simple circular shape. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the bend deformer to curve that around the surface of the capsule. That's the body of the character. And I still have yet to find like a really perfect way to do this without positioning and moving and shifting around. So what you saw I did there was I set up the bend to 90 degrees and then I rotated to negative 45 degrees and then had to reposition it so that the curve would match the face of the cylinder. Um, or rather the the curve would match the, the face of the capsule and, you know, hug the, the contours of the character's face here. So got that working, pulled out a little mouth and a couple of basic eyes. I did this to sort of set up the very basic foundation of the, what the mask is going to be here. And then so what I do here is I go ahead and, you know, get everything roughly positioned where I wanted it. And then I made a copy of the pulled out, uh, and curved uh, disc, and I just I just made that editable because I think if, when we when we hop into the sculpt tool here, what we're going to want to do is is have like just pure editable polys. We don't want um, any unexpanded primitives. So, see, so I've done that. I added some subdivisions, set up my symmetry here, and you can see because of the way that curve deformer had repositioned the character, I had to change the symmetry to world symmetry instead of uh, just object symmetry. So um, it wasn't lining up perfectly there at first, but we got it working. And now we're going to spend a lot of time, mostly with the pull tool, uh, just sculpting the little details in this face. And what I think works nicely is we've got such a simple geometric character just made of a handful of shapes. And to, to have an interesting juxtaposition against that, what we're going to do is have a highly detailed and um, you know, much less simple geometric mask. And that's going to that's gonna provide contrast against um, the really simple shape of the character. So you can see here I'm just adding in little wrinkles, adding some, some bumps and some grooves. I, curved, I carved out a little sort of set of nos nostrils here for the character. Because it is Halloween after all, so we want it to be a little bit creepy, a little bit monstrous. Kind of spooky. Now the sculpt tool, I know a lot of you sculpting savants out there are going to tell me that my typology is a little weird here. And, and it is. Um, for these types of exercises, I, I typically don't get into creating sort of the, the perfect geometry for my model. Um, so you can see there are places where the topology gets a little bit weird. And we deal with that. We keep it rather simple and just deal with that using... Um, increased subdivisions and sometimes a sub uh, 
subdivided surface nerve, formerly known as a hypernerve. Here I'm using the smooth tool to sort of undo some of the sculpting I had previously done and kind of changed, changed the geometry there a bit. Just slowly working it up. And we, hopped out, we hop out of sculpting and start getting into a little bit of texturing here. I have this little string for the mask. And I think ultimately this winds up not being visible in the final rendering just because of the, the front on angle I decided to go with. But the texture we made for the string winds up being quite useful a little bit later. I'll show you what I mean there. Let's create a little bit of surface texture on this string. Used a gradient with very thin slivers of black in the diffuse channel. And then I right clicked on the gradient and hit double knots, which is really useful if you want to create this kind of thing. Repositioning things here slightly. Now we're getting into modeling the fingers. Frequently what I'll, what I'll do is use a capsule and you can see this shape is almost the same as a capsule. But since it's a spline with three points in it, or a, a sweep nerve whose basis is a spline with three points in it, it makes it a lot easier to get a, a nice little curve there. I'm just repositioning these fingers, getting them set up, going with a simplified three finger hand, which works nicely for characters like this. Three fingers and a thumb, looking good. Since we're getting sort of close on the model, I'm going to start putting some lighting down. And as we're texturing, we want to, we want to pay attention to our lighting as well because really the, the interplay between the textures and the light is what's going to give you sort of the quality of your final rendering. So we've got a couple of spotlights and a sky object with a luminant gradient on it, which is going to do most of the lifting for us in terms of lighting. And then what I'm going to do here is add a cute little face inside the mouth of the mask. And that's going to be like this cute little trick-or-treater sort of peeking through. And that's, that's the real character. That's the real face here. Making a little mouth. Throwing some little eyes in there and a little nose. I go back and forth a little bit on this face in terms of positioning. So I wanted it to be visible enough that you'd notice it, but subtle enough where it's it's still a little bit of a, a little bit of a surprise and delight moment for the viewer.
originally the thought was to have the character's eyes, you know, being revealed behind openings where the eyes and the mask would be. But I decided it was a funnier, cuter sort of look all around to just have the whole facial, facial features be poking through the, uh, just the mouth of the mask. A little bit more absurd. It, it, it actually winds up making the proportions of our character be even a little wackier. Some of those I'm going to go through and tweak here as well. Because as you know, it's always about pushing and pulling and, and getting those details right. Here I decided that the mask is still just a little bit too simple, so I'm going to add some horns. And this is where that uh, texture I made for the string comes in handy, because when I add the horns, I realized, you know, it'd be nice to have some little grooves on these things. And I already had that string texture set up, and it, it wound up working really quite perfectly. Setting up a camera. A little bit of, a, of an upward angle in terms of the view that gives us some nice uh, perspective into the mouth of the mask. And it also creates sort of an ominous, looming feel to the, to the perspective of the piece. Still tweaking those facial features, getting them visible enough, but not too visible because we still want it to be kind of a cute little reveal. Adding a ground plane, some compositing tags to sort of set those up. I'm winding up using the same gradient, uh, luminant gradient texture as I did for the sky on the floor. And then what I wind up doing is actually just scaling it really, really large so that it's the, it's the middle ground color that winds up showing up in the rendering, which matches up nicely with the middle ground of the, of the sky object. And now, since we had such a nicely sculpted and detailed surface to the mask, I thought it would, it would only make sense to do a little body painting and further exacerbate those details, further exaggerate those details with a little bit of uh, painted texture. So I'm going through and just playing with a few of the presets here that come with the body paint uh, tool. So now I wound up uh, ultimately with this, this charcoal brush, as I recall. There's a handful of brushes in there that have some, some pretty nice effects and uh, it all depends on the type of thing you're trying to achieve, but I wanted to use some sort of gritty, grainy brushes here and get sort of a rough, monstrous texture. Um, I, I typically don't do this kind of texturing, so it's, it's a really fun experiment, and uh, it's, it's a good change of pace to go in there and, and try some new features and press some buttons that I don't normally press inside Cinema 4D. So I had a bit of fun creating this texture. Normally, I just make teeth with little capsules. This time, I decided to sculpt them in and paint them white by hand. I wound up not going through and carefully painting every little edge because as I was going through the, the process of texturing this thing, I realized that the way the teeth looked here, they, they sort of looked like the way a cheap kind of dollar store mask would look. It would have, you know, some painted details or some like, you know, poorly applied printed graphics to the mask. And you'd have little variations here and there. And it uh, winds up looking pretty neat, actually. And I like having these little inconsistencies on something that's meant to be, you know, a monster mask. It's not meant to be a perfect shiny sphere. It's meant to be a little rough around the edges. So I really just embrace that part of it. You'll notice I'm also working in layers. Um, I, that, that makes it much easier to go through and adjust details later on in the process. You can erase things without disrupting color and patterns beneath. You can change colors and adjust contrast and things like that. Turn down opacity. I always recommend working in colors or, or in, in layers, I should say. I always recommend working in layers if at all possible. Any way to keep your workflow non-destructive, ultimately 
winds up making things much, much more flexible and, and easy to deal with. We're going through and just adding a little bit more texture with some of these brushes. A little bit of a golden hue here to sort of break up the surface of all this green and yellow. Adding some asymmetry there, which I think works nicely. Of course, a little red glow to the eyes never hurt uh, a, sp a spooky character design, for sure. At this point, we're getting quite close. I was decided. I decided that you know the the, the character inside the face, the, inside the mouth of the mask, the little character's face, was really uh, was not coming through as much as I wanted it to in terms of lighting and contrast. It was it was quite dark, quite shadowy. So I did a few things. One is I went into the gamma settings of global illumination, and turn that up a little bit, which makes the light sort of bounce a little further, which helps, you know, lighten up some of the shadowed areas. And I also added a tiny little light in there, uh, real close to the face, and uh, turned that pretty low, but did it in such a way where it would throw a little extra light into that area and pull some of the shadows away. And as I was looking at it, I was, you know, I almost called it a piece right here, but then I was like, you know what? What, what else would a, a kooky Halloween mask have? And that, that would be some crazy hair, right? So at the last minute, I decided to make a selection on the top of the model and add some hair to it. So the next minute or so here, we're going to play with some kinky, frizzy monster hair, um, which always is always fun. It always adds some, some personality and some texture to the character to throw a little hair on there. I'm using the brush tool to sort of alter the position, and again, going for asymmetry here, letting it uh, letting it be a little irregular. Felt it was a little too short there, so I made it longer, which is allowed is going to allow it to get a little bit messier when we when we drop it. And here I'm, I'm hitting the, the play button, and that allows the hair to sort of fall somewhat naturally. And I've also gone through and in the tags, the simulation tags, you'll see that there's a hair collision object. And since I wanted the hairs to fall somewhat naturally onto the mask and horns, I added that hair collider tag to um, those bits of geometry so that the, the hair wouldn't just fall right through it. And another thing you typically have to do with hair is throw some anti-aliasing on because it does get a little bit stair-steppy and aliased if you don't do that. It adds to render time, of course, but it really, really improves the look of the hair. A lot of times the hair looks pretty lousy without aliasing. So here we go, knocking out the final rendering. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.